Hey guys, Cynthia Williams here with the Lift Program and Lifestyle Nutrition. So today I wanted to talk about how to record food when you're eating out. Some crazy hair there, um, as always. So this is something that I have to address with my clients a lot um, because there's there's a couple different ways um, that you track your food when you're eating out. It's much different than the foods that you cook at home where you have complete control over every ingredient that you're using. So when you go out to eat, um, whether you're eating in a surplus for muscle gains or eating um, in a deficit for weight loss, you have to track your food. Now, it's great. Lots and lots of um, restaurants these days are now starting to include the calories on their menus, which is fantastic. The other thing you can do is you can just about Google any restaurant and um, find the calorie information associated with the meal that you're going to have. The a downside to that is, is these calorie configurations are typically done in the corporate kitchens for these restaurants. So saying that that calorie amount is the same per location all over the United States or whatever it may be, like let's use um, one of our favorite places to go is BJ's Brew House. And there's lots and lots of locations and they have calories um, on all their meals in the um, menu. But again, those calories were der derived in their corporate kitchen when they're putting these recipes together. So to say that the location here in Louisville, Kentucky is the exact same as what they used in the corporate kitchen, it's not. Um, it's just an more, it's not necessarily an average, but it's their best guess. guess because you know, you're not using the exact same size chicken breast every time. And it's not exactly a half a cup of rice every time. And it's not, you know, this, that, and the other. It's not all the exact same every time. So a general rule of thumb that we use is typically adding 30% more um, on to your calorie recording that you're having. So let's say you're having meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and green beans. I would put that in and I would add a third or 30% more calories to it than what the, um, the app gives you or if you Google it to find that information, add another 30% to be safe, especially if you're in a calorie deficit and you're on a weight loss journey. It is always better to overguess than underguess. But what you have to consider too is the amount of oils and butters and things that are being used to prepare these meals that you're not seeing and that is not being accounted for. Again, because in the corporate kitchen, maybe they used one tablespoon in your location here at Louisville, Kentucky, maybe they used three. So just putting that 30% on is kind of a padding um, to protect yourself, to make sure that we're accounting for all calories. And if you happen to be over, great. That would actually put you in more of a deficit that day. Um, so even better towards working towards your weight loss goals. Then the other thing, or the so that's for a generalized meal. Now, when my clients, when I'm working with them, we're working on, we're counting macros. So we're counting how much protein each day, how many carbohydrates each day, fats, fiber, sugars, all of that stuff. So if let's say one of my clients was going out to eat and they were having a steak, a six ounce sirloin and a baked potato. Well, I wouldn't ask them to put 30% more, 30 more on that steak. So I wouldn't ask them to record, you know, that wouldn't make it an eight ounce steak because that's gonna give them a false read on their protein numbers for that day. It's gonna say they had more protein than they did. So what we typically do is we register or record the six ounces of steak, and then we'll add two tablespoons of vegetable oil to that steak as one of the ingredients in the meal to give us the added calories and fat that I know that that steak has been cooked in the kitchen with because it was cooked on a flat top grill. You can guarantee that grill is covered in oil and butter and then it's now on your food as well. So that's how we would record um, a steak or a, a single piece of grilled meat or something like that that's coming from the flat top um, versus you know like a chicken pot pie where it's all together and I would just add 30% onto that meal. So so with that said, so a lot of people will get really overwhelmed when they're eating out because they don't know how to record it. So they just don't record it. And your best guesstimate, if it's 70% correct, is always better than not recording anything, which is 0% accurate. So 
just putting something in, doing your best to record it is always better and always going to keep you on track and working towards those goals versus just saying, I don't know what it is. Screw it. I'm not going to record it. And then you end up eating way more. Um, and again, especially if you're trying to lose weight, that's one of the worst things that you can do for yourself. So always put something in. It may not be a hundred percent, but something is always, always better than nothing when you're recording. Um, and just like I said, you can Google just about any place um, and get a, a, a idea or something super close to what you're eating. And then what we I prefer to use is my fitness pal just because of the amount of data that my fitness pal will collect and compile um, for me as a coach when I'm working with my clients it allows me to see a lot of what they're doing. Um, but the database in my fitness pal is huge. but again, the database in my fitness pal is based off of averages. So we have to be careful um, when we're recording, when we go out to eat, to make sure that we account for the surplus and calories that we're having from the unaccounted oils, butters, whatever it may be um, that are being used to cook the food. So always record. I hope this is helpful. Um, but yes, just don't, don't give up or in when you're going out to eat and recording. Um, do your best, Google it, use my fitness pal, look ahead of time before you go out to eat so you can make your decisions. Um, so you're, you're more well prepared, um, when you're going into the restaurant and you have a good idea of, um, what you need to eat to meet your goals for the day. And then just record, just do your best guesstimate. Always just say, you know, something is better than nothing. So, um, don't let it overwhelm you. It's not a big deal. Just do the best that you can. Um, and then you just keep going from there. So uh, I hope this is helpful again for when you're going out to eat, a useful tool. Um, yeah, so check out my program, Cynthia Williams at thelifestylenutrition.com. And I will talk to you guys on the next one.